Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Welcome to a Friday, finally, June 30th, 2023. It's about 12.52 p.m. here along the uh, Gulf Coast in Texas. Uh, latest activity shows a 2.2 earthquake um, happening on the globe. Notice the earthquake 3D globe still uh, adjusted to my uh, time zone Time zone at home. Still a little. There we go, 12.50. No, no, we're, we're on cue now. All right, uh, 1.1 it looks like into the California area. Last 24 hours of earthquake movement here on the globe. Well, the largest so far looks to be a 5.8 working its way over here across the Java Trench. Uh, this earthquake coming in earlier this morning, somewhat deep at about 85 kilometers deep here into the subduction zone. Uh, it's been fairly active. Uh, a look at the last 30 days, 4.5 in this area shows a, uh, a nice little feature here across the trench zone with some uh, fours and fives. It looks like we did see a 5.6 within the same area uh, back earlier uh, around the 1st of June or 7th of June, excuse me, with that 5.6. So uh, things appear to be kicking up slightly there uh, today with that 5.8. Continue to watch that zone. Uh, well, there's no doubt that's a, a major player in some high accumulated slip rate for some large earthquakes. Off the coast here of Tokyo, Japan, 4.3 coming in just after midnight last night. Uh, 56 kilometers deep. Kuro Kamachaka Trench looks fairly quiet for now. Uh, let's see if we got anything major brewing on up here into the Alaska area. Looks like mostly twos and uh, occasional threes up there as seen on the map as well. Um, no major unusual unrest going on up there across the Alaska area. West Coast, a little bit of movement here across the Mount St. Helens area today with a 1. Point, uh, it looks like a 1.5, the largest in that little little bit of earthquake activity. So let's double check that and see what's going on up around Mount St. Helens. We'll go to the PNSN network, which is uh, monitors the trimmer activity as well on the Cascadia. Nothing from yesterday showing up there, but. Uh, let's check out the Mount St. Helens area for volcano seismicity. There's the uh, 1.5 that occurred earlier today, right in the crater area. Looks like about 6.3 kilometers deep. Um, see what we got for seismograph stations here. This is going to be right smack dab in the crater area, as uh, far as this Webby quarter goes. Hopefully, it's accessible. Uh, let's take a look and see what's going on. There we go. Well, this is fairly recent, it looks like. Uh, when did this one kick up here? That one was 06, so 6 in the morning. I don't believe that's going to be this one right here because this is fairly recent. 18, almost 1800 on the UTC time, and it's currently. 15, uh, 17.53 UTC time, so this is newer activity. Far as the one this morning goes, looks like that's going to be this earthquake right here uh, for the 1.5. But it looks like we've seen a couple other uh, quakes within the same magnitude uh, following this 1.5 this morning, but hasn't been updated yet on the USGS map, but it's there. That's, that's earthquake activity right here and in the black line as well. Prior to that, looks like some much smaller activity, but these three right here, probably around the one range. Of course, this one's a 1.5. Uh, let's look at the previous day here. A couple other smaller quakes right here. Maybe another one. I'd say a handful of smaller uh, quakes kicking off here at the Mount St. Helens area. Uh, we'll double check this tonight. No major swarms, no unusual volcanic activity. Uh, they definitely do see some some uh, earthquakes on occasion uh, here in Northern California. The last one looks like a 2.4 down here at the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust area. 2.4, 20 kilometers deep. Uh, prior to that, we did have a 2.9, a little bit further offshore here, uh, but along the uh, pretty much the triple point junction area, which is the North American, uh, well, the Pacific plate down south here, and the North American plate um, to the northeast along with the Juan de Fuca plate up here or if you want to be specific the Gorda plate it's a little small micro plate that pretty much cuts off right about here uh, and covers this area being subducted 
underneath the North American plate. So, all right, let's see what we got for Southern Cal. Still seeing some movement here on the Garlock Vault shear zone. Look at this, eight, got about eight earthquakes or so. This is a, uh, it's a uh, major seismically active um, vault system here. It's a different setup than what we see normally along the North American and the Pacific plate boundary. Most, most, not all of them, but most of these run fairly parallel uh, to the San Andreas Fault, which is the plate boundary, which is northwest to southeast here as the arrow goes uh, in this area. That's a plate boundary here along the red line. But this one's a shear zone, so that does accumulate a lot of stress within the area. Uh, of the plate boundary. I think it's a little bit more dangerous than the, what people um, say about it. It's obviously got a lot of strain built up here within this region, kind of like a spring. If you really think about it, it does accumulate quite a bit of stress. Uh, and right now, um, so far we got about, let's get a total tally, I think it was eight or nine earthquakes, seven earthquakes. Start off with a 3.4, nine kilometers deep. Uh, we'll continue to watch this. I. You know, I have no doubt in my mind if we see a larger quake within this area, potentially it could trigger the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, where it's, you know, it's been fairly locked and loaded. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that area, the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. Also a little bit of movement here off the San Andreas Fault uh, near the Pier Blossom, California area. 1.2 and a 0.8. No major swarming going on down in the Southern California area for now, mostly smaller microquakes across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, no doom and gloom, at least not from this channel. Uh, we will take a look at the Yellowstone overviews here real quick. And as you can see, uh, there's the... This kind of looks like a distant earthquake here, what, about uh, four hours ago? I wonder if that's going to be that 5.8 that struck up here uh, in the Java Trench. That would be about right. Uh, so that is indeed picking up that uh, 5.8 from afar, distant earthquake. Uh, and this just goes to show you how sensitive these uh, equipment uh, seismograph stations can be uh, if it picks up a 5.8 thousands of miles away. Uh, and as you can see, I don't see any magma movement, no major earthquake swarm, no unusual activity going on here at Yellowstone. Yes, we have some geysers that have been kicking up, uh, but far as any... Um, you know, there's obviously they've had a lot of rainfall up here recently. Uh, it does take a little while for that rainfall to percolate into the ground uh, and potentially could create new um, geysers out there in the vicinity of Yellowstone that may not have been active. Uh, it's, you know, it takes a little while. Remember all that flooding they had up here? Uh, was it last year? It, it could probably take about a year. Um, so, as far as earthquake activity goes, it's fairly quiet. We're not, you know, Errors like this are strictly errors. This is not magma movement kicking up all of a sudden. It's some type of environmental noise. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's obviously not showing up on the borehole. It's not showing up on the local seismograph stations here. And this around the northeastern entrance here. Um, hard to say what that activity is. Um, it looks as though potentially maybe, yeah, I wonder if that's going to be it. Let me see here. Doesn't look like it. Well, maybe. Uh, looks like it may have showed up here across the seismograph station over here, but this one's pretty well amplified as well. Um, not for sure if they had specific thunderstorms out there or not in that area uh, at night, but we will expect them to come in again uh, later this afternoon, I believe. Let me see what we got here for the Storm Prediction Center. Actually, it looks a lot less active. Still a chance here across the uh, northwestern Wyoming area. Uh, but as you know, as we always do, we'll double check this each night, and uh, you know, see what's going on there at Yellowstone. But for now, things are very quiet and very calm. All right, as far as the rest of the earthquake activity goes across the Tonga Ridge and the Kermadec Trench, things uh, fairly quiet. A little bit of activity from yesterday. I did just check the GeoNet servers here, and this is the latest earthquake drum map here on the GeoNet program. Uh, shows quiet conditions. Not a whole lot going on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting used to this call fair. It's really, really sticky out here. It's about 95 degrees, but feels like 108. Uh, humidity is off the chart, and the dew points are way up there. I'm not even joking, but I like it. I kind of like it. Um, 
being from California, for the most part, we got that drier heat. Uh, but I do enjoy the moisture out here. All right, um, let's see what else we got. A little bit of movement here across the Puerto Rico area. Threes um, kicking up here across the Puerto Rico trench. Uh, looks like one of those from today, the majority of these from yesterday. No major movement going on across the South America region. And uh, Alaska, as you can see, a little bit of activity kicking up. Uh, nothing major, 2.5 map and 2.5 magnitude and above shows some twos and threes uh, with no major movement now to report uh, across the area. And as you can see, that 5.8 over here around the Java Trench uh, is going to be the largest within the last 24 hours. We'll continue to watch this though. Uh, even though it's gone pretty quiet back here, uh, we're getting that forward migration a lot of times that momentum will put stress here in this area, but we've seen a handful of uh, earthquakes and now a 5.8. Uh, there's a couple different scenarios here. We could get the return of some deeper, larger earthquake activity out here across the Tonga Trench uh, to make up for the uh, uh, obviously the momentum that goes across this area, as far as the pressure gradients go, uh, or if there's enough strain potentially. I don't know if we're going to see anything larger up here across the Sumatra area or not because we have seen, uh, as I mentioned here earlier in the video, quite a bit of earthquake activity up and down the board. All right, uh, solarham.net. Let's see what we have going on here for SolarHam. Ah, I gotta have, a, gotta have a good air conditioner in this type of weather, along with lots of cold drinks. Well, this sunspot region here, 3354, continues to gain some strength. Uh, it does have a couple more very close complex cores here that indicate uh, you know, some com complexity within the sunspot region. Uh, it is still within the view of the Earth as far as a visible disk here on the sun goes and it uh, could be geoeffective if we get a major uh, CME but it's got to do it here within probably the next 24 hours or so because this is going to be uh, drifting obviously towards the northwestern quadrant and will be out of view here uh, in a couple days. Uh, latest flare information shows some activity overnight, sea flare activity. Uh, it's been trying, uh, but uh, like I say, I still think we have a good shot of seeing some M flare activity from this sunspot region. Uh, the rest of the visible disk here show some dead or dying sunspot regions with a new development over here on the eastern limb. I'll continue to watch that though for some uh, for some future activity. Right now the main threat is going to be the beta, beta gamma delta class. Pretty complex uh, sun structure there, magnetically complex in 3354. That's going to be the big one right up here. Uh, no major solar events headed our way yet. Uh, and far as weather activity goes across the country, uh, here where I'm at, down in Texas, we're pretty dry. Well, I shouldn't say dry. You can't use that word around here. <laughs> There's no dryness in the air. Even though we're sunny and hot, it is very moist out here um, along the Gulf Coast, which is cool because I'm going swimming right after this update. Um, but severe weather, uh, pretty good area up here across the uh, plains, it looks like, stretching into portions of the Midwest. I don't think we have any major threats for tornadoes. Looks like eastern Colorado, a 5% chance uh, there in the brown with a 2% probability across these areas on the map. Main threat's going to be some potential for some hail and some damaging uh, wind gusts as well, as you can see listed up on the map. Uh, tomorrow, a little bit different story. Got some weather entering into western Texas. Um, slight risk for some severe weather out there across these regions on the map. All right, I'm going to bounce out of here, folks. Have a good day. Um, just got to uh, relax and go swimming, I think, right now. Um, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight with the uh, update video. Take care and stay safe out there.